guys, I'm Larry. I'm here to show you today Starkey's Virtual MFD. It's in an open alpha for everybody to try, but because it's an alpha, it might be a little bit tricky to download, install, and configure. So here's the website. Starkey's Virtual MFD tells you all about it. It's a game controller, uh, basically for your tablet or smartphone that can um, be used with really any game running on the PC or e even business applications running on the PC. So when I come over to game panels and downloads, uh, today for the alpha, we're basically demoing two different games that we support. You guys will be able to customize all your own games and, and really support hundreds if not thousands of different titles in the future. But for now, we just have these very, very simple samples that we can show you uh, for, for these two different titles, Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous. And then the third link here is really how you download the executable that has to be installed on the PC. So with that, I'm just going to click on here to download that. And then I'm gonna click down here and say, show in folder. And now I'm in my downloads. And from my downloads, I can see there's just a zip file out there. But with that, let's right click on this file and ideally just say extract to a folder. Um, that way it doesn't fill up your local file system where you're at. So when we say extract a folder, we now have this folder instead of the zip file that we can go into. Once we go into it, we'll see several different files. Um, right now for the alpha, we're including these two macro files, one for each game, Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen. In the future, you'll have to download those things on your own as you're starting to play with many new games. And we'll show you what that looks like later. But for the most part, you have this one executable here and there's nothing to install right now. There's no installer available. You just run it. So with that, if I just run this, it's gonna come up initially and tell me, you know, hey, failed macro file. What I can do is click on the macro and choose a macro file to load. So I'm gonna load the Star Citizen macro. And at that point, it's ready to go. It's showing us a few things. It's showing us the IP address that is available to me, the 192.168.86.32. Now that's the local IP address of my local PC. One of the caveats, whether I'm using uh, whatever client I'm using to connect, that client will need to be on the same network. My, my PC here is hardwired in. These tablets here are on Wi-Fi, but they're on Wi-Fi to the same network. So as long as they're on the same network and they have local network connectivity, we should be fine. Sometimes when you run these apps, the Windows firewall is gonna pop up and prompt you, um, should you allow that open or not? And you wanna say yes to it. So you don't have any risk of your network being blocked, but there's no outside access into the application. All the application is in your local home over your local network. So from a security perspective, there's no risk of somebody hijacking your computer and trying to do anything inappropriate. Um, so with that, I want to go over to the panel and walk you through what you might do on the tablet. So from the tablet, we're going to go to the same website using your browser starkeys-vmfd.com. And from there, we're gonna also go to game panels, just like we did on the PC. And from game panels, the difference here is instead of downloading the executable zip file, we're actually just gonna run one of these panels. And the easiest way to do that is to click on the picture. The panel doesn't know what PC you're running on yet. The panel has to know which PC to connect to. So in order to do that, we need this value here, whatever's shown in red, and we have to enter that into this box here. So if I click on the box and I type 192.168.86.32, at that point they should be connected. The easiest way to test that the connection's working is if I just hit exit seat, we'll see over here, exit seat was pressed and the macro was processed. At that point, we're ready to actually move this out of the way Close this, we don't need it anymore. We can minimize that for now. And if we actually go into Star Citizen and launch it, we should have this pad fully functional now in game. Okay, so now that we're in the game, I'm actually starting the game. You're laying on your back, laying in your bed. Um, so if we just say hey, exit seat, that'll also get me out of my bed. So there we go. That's equivalent to me hitting whatever the correct keyboard press is to
to get out of bed, but I'm doing it from a tablet. Now, if I come over here, this is actually a PC, and this PC is a touchscreen PC, but it works the same way. Let me do something like get back into bed. What's nice is I can have an unlimited number of MFDs functional at the same time, and as we get more advanced MFDs that are useful for different sections of the game and they don't all look the same, instead of having to be on a single MFD where I hit buttons and jump back and forth, I can actually have each MFD up with something different being displayed. But this is just as functional as this one. If I hit exit seat now, he's gonna get out of bed again. Um, so both of these MFDs are actually functional right now in game. It's all web-based. So um, as long as you have a fairly modern browser that supports um, web sockets, so that's really all you need. Let me just uh, take a stroll now and just demonstrate a couple other capabilities so we can see things like landing gear up and down. And then I want to go over some additional details on exactly what's in the macro files and how they work. So real quick, we're just going to go grab a vehicle. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy. Your ship has been delivered to the following landing pad. Okay, now that I'm in my vehicle, I need to start the engines and get it flight ready. So instead of fumbling around with the virtual MFDs here, because basically these are the MFDs in game, and what we're doing is we're basically mapping these to the real world. So if I just hit flight ready, everything should power on. And we see that now I'm ready to go. At this point, we should be able to take off. So, and we want to raise our landing gear. And we see landing gear raised. I don't know if you heard that or not. There it goes. He just told us. Uh, at that point, I can actually bring up the nav map. And I'm going to choose some place I want to jump to. So, perhaps Yella is a good location. We set route. Close the nav map. And then we got to go get lined up with yellow. Um, we're going to spool. So now the spool is running. And as soon as they're both done, we'll be able to quantum jump. Great. They're both ready. If I press quantum, So that gives you an idea of how the virtual MFDs work and what they're capable of. But now what I'd like to do is step away from the game for a little bit and actually go through some of the other nuances of how do you actually map a button press to actually perform a keyboard task or a mouse click or something of that nature. A macro is actually, if we look at the website, uh, let me open one of these actually, and view source. When I actually press a button such as flight ready, it doesn't tell your computer what key to press. What it does is it actually says, go execute this client to server JavaScript and pass macro colon one. So macro colon one is just um, a text message that will tell the computer what to do. So if we actually go look at the macro file that gets loaded on the PC, so flight ready is basically saying press numpad zero, which is the zero key over here. That may or may not be mapped to anything as opposed to exit seat is the H key. Now I happen to know that the H key for macro three, which is described as exit seat, is the default key to exit the seat in the game. So if I just press the H, that's the same thing as me hitting exit over here. Um, if I want to open up the nav map, it's the same thing as pressing F2. But numpad was a little different. Flight ready 
by default is not mapped to a keystroke. So if we go back to the game, sometimes what you need to do is go into options and actually map the keys appropriately. So if we go over to key bindings, keep it on keyboard and mouse over here. Even if you have a HOTAS set up like I do, the panel simulates key presses, not joystick movements. So we leave this on keyboard and mouse. We come over to advanced customization over here. And as an example, if we go to cockpit, flight ready by default wasn't set. I have it set now. Double click it, hit flight ready. Now I just mapped it to the macro file, which was set to num0. So I kind of want to do an, an in summary, you know, what are the steps if you want to create some customization? And, and I, I kind of skipped the whole section because I already had the, the client web page downloaded to my computer. You guys don't have that yet. On the website, you can actually go to the website and instead of clicking run the panel, there's another option to say, go download the panel. Downloading the panel is gonna give you a local copy of all the files. It's a zip file. You're gonna expand the zip file the same way into a different folder. And now you have all the files. So it's just a good starting point. If you wanna go in and keep the layout the same and modify what some of the buttons look like, um, what the name of the buttons are, what the graphics are. You can kind of keep the same style of rows and columns and change it to your heart's content. Or you can come up with something completely brand new. Let me give you an example of some things that the community is already working on that has me pretty excited when I start to see some of these things coming out. Here's one panel that's much more graphically intensive. It's not those rows and columns. This is being done by somebody who's more of a web developer. Uh, and I think he's doing a great job. And this is gonna be very interactive. Hopefully we'll be releasing this in uh, the next alpha release, probably sometime in April. There's another one out there that the community is working on for Elite Dangerous. Um, so again, this is similar to the rows and columns, but I think he's, he's taken a pretty neat approach with it uh, using different colors, um, different size buttons. You can either start from scratch or download one of the samples, but the important thing is, you know, know what buttons you want to map, know what the key mapping is in the game, go into the game's options settings and figure that out or set it to a key, copy the macro file and create your own version of the macro file that maps that key as one of the macros, go into the HTML page and map everything. And at that point, you should have pretty much a functioning site. Now, in order to access that site on a tablet, it needs to be hosted somewhere. So what you'll see coming out in the next several weeks or maybe a month time frame from this video recording is the ability on the site to actually upload new panels. We wanna empower the community to be able to provide panels on their own and share them with the rest of the community. This is nothing that we're gonna charge for, nor is this something we're gonna allow you to charge for. We just want you to be able to kind of like open source, upload these panels to the site um, and share them out with the community. So as new games are being developed or old games that um, are still your favorite to play and you create these awesome panels for them, you can share them with the community and other people can easily download them and get them up and running. So here's our, our latest panel that we're working on. What's also I think a, probably a little unique of what we're doing is we're not limited to just key press macros. We also have the capability of running local scripts. So you can actually run applications. So this particular panel enables each one of these buttons here that I can actually launch the title. So if I wanna run Steam, I can actually have a button here and press it and Steam is gonna launch or Twitch is gonna launch or my favorite game Star Citizen is gonna launch. But it's really exciting to know that that's another use case, another fun aspect of this whole thing that you can do. Um, so when you have a lot of windows open, you can't even see what's on your desktop. But if you have a panel on the side, it makes it very easy to have those shortcuts. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with and uh, hope you enjoy the community portal. Uh, we also have a Discord channel on the website, so please join the Discord if you have any questions. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Um, I'm happy to get involved and help in any way I can. Thanks.